Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be watching more Star Trek, the original series, and we're going to be watching an episode called uh, Spectre of the Gun, so I'm very excited for that. Before we get into that, I don't know if you guys notice, I don't know if it, if it makes any difference, if you guys can tell the difference, but I did get a new and hopefully better camera lens than I had before. Uh, the last one broke, so... I was planning on upgrading eventually, I just ended up upgrading sooner than I thought I would. And also since I'm hoping that you guys can help me to stay accountable, I have been really trying to get back into reading. Like I know I've been telling myself for years that I'm going to get back into reading, but I really want to make that a reality now, so if I'm in bed going to sleep or waking up instead of pulling out my phone and scrolling through random stuff, uh, I would like to pull out a book instead. And that's worked out really well so far. I finally finished the Han Solo trilogy. This was a gift from one of my close friends. She bought it for me like five, six, seven years ago. I don't know. And I've been working on it for a few years and just have been kind of lacking the motivation to read anything. So I finally finished it and I'm very excited because now I can read more stuff. So before I move on to something new, I wanted to read something old because I have a lot of books on my shelf that I haven't read since I was a kid, since I was a teenager, since I, you know, 20 years ago, whatever. So I picked out one that's pretty short. And it's the Lord of the Flies. I read it in school. I don't remember what grade, but yeah, I'm already, you know, three chapters in. So I'm making good progress on that. And that's my update. What are you guys reading right now? And so now the main reason that you guys are all here, you're like, shut up, bunny. Just get to the episode. We're here for the Star Trek. I got you. We're going to watch Spectre of the Gun. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And please... Continue to be good as most of you have and not spoil anything from the future episodes, series, character names, events. Please, I've been getting kind of a lot of them in the comments again lately. I don't want to know like what episodes are good or bad before I watch them. I'd like to go in with a completely fresh and clean perspective and I know that's what you guys want too. So yeah, if you want to talk about your favorite episode in season three or in the next generation or animated series just wait until we get there don't even mention it don't bring it up that would be awesome all right hope you guys enjoyed today's episode thank you guys for your patience and your cooperation as always range 43 looks like kilometers some kind of psychedelic satellite Obviously, it intends to intercept us. It has made several course changes corresponding with our own. Unclear whether it intends to attack or merely communicate with us. That is the question. Staying with us. Let's see what it does. Do we have our shields up just in case? Or would that be a sign of aggression? You will turn back immediately. Vulcan, Captain. English. No, Captain. It was Swahili. Telepathy. Unquestionably. We're to establish contact with the Malkotians at all costs. We hope that you will understand that our intent is to establish peaceful relations with you. What say you to that? Lieutenant, answer. Nothing, sir. Clear on all frequencies. I guess they said their peace. Get out or get fried. I prefer being a welcome guest, Captain, but there seems to be little choice. So they're they're just ignoring the warning. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's go find out what it is they're afraid of. Transported they down afraid? to the Malkotian planet and have encountered conditions which are completely contrary to what we were prepared for. Fine time for the transporter mechanism to break down. Tricoder readings, Mr. Spock. Unknown, Captain. This unit is not functioning. And let's get out of here. Correct Enterprise. I'm guessing that's not functioning either. No use, Captain. Aliens. What is that? 
feels like a another like Halloween episode, possibly. Well, it does have Spectre in the title. Oh, Lee Cronin's back. <laughs> Who I now know is good old Gene Kuhn. You shall be punished. You, Captain Kirk. Yours shall be the pattern of your death. We come in peace, but we'll defend ourselves if necessary. But your phaser's probably not working. It is done. Whoa, saloon. Old Western set. We really are the, uh, what's it called? Train wagon to the stars? We finally made it. <laughs> But the, are the buildings, are any of the buildings actual buildings? Or are they just a wall? Obviously, this represents the Malkotian's concept of an American frontier town. Well, this is a strange punishment. They're trying, it seems like they're trying to make us feel at home. And these, Captain. Oh, oh yes, Beautiful they have guns. Specimen. Where's Sulu? He would love this. Whatever the Malkotians have planned for us, it won't be pleasant. In the midst of what seems so unreal, the harsh reality, this is not a dream. The sky reminds me of Vulcan Planet. 1881, Tombstone, Arizona. Something about that date, October 26th, 1881. What was it? I don't know. There's a sheriff. Ike! Frank! Billy! Tom! Well, I knew you wouldn't let them scare you away. And now they're gonna have to fight after the way they shot off their mouth. He called me Ike. You Frank, Bones Tom, and Billy. Scotty's gotta be Billy, right? He seems like a Billy. Two factions fought for control of the town of Tombstone. Who won? The Clantons lost, Mr. Checker. And we are the Clantons. And if this is a replay of history, history cannot be changed. But this isn't real Arizona, so it, 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 it why can't it be changed? <laughs> or are they saying try as they might, the Malkotians just won't allow it to change because that's their punishment? It's impossible. Things like this can't happen. Is this a dead man, Doctor? Very dead, Mr. Spock. <laughs> I don't know why that sounded so funny. Death is real. Death is real. Oh, Billy! Oh, okay. He's Billy. Oh, baby, I knew they couldn't keep you out of town. Oh, you knew that. Come on. She's got a rose in her tits. I love the pink against the black. What a nice contrast. The man who kills on sight. Morgan Fair. I seriously suggest you reseat yourself immediately without moving a muscle of either hand. That would involve you in what was called fast draw. Are we going to have a duel at the end of this? I'm getting like good, bad, and the ugly vibes here. I guess you'll show them now, won't you? I don't think we're going to have any choice. He reminds me of a character from that. Uh, now, we don't want any trouble. If you don't want any trouble, what are you doing in my town? You'd like me to draw, wouldn't you? All right. I will. No, we would not like that. Soon enough. Okay. How long do we have? Soon enough. Close, Ike. Lucky there wasn't two of them. You boys watch it. I assure you, sir, we shall watch it. Billy, you were wonderful. A um, little bit awkward. <laughs> Spock's just like, fascinating. <laughs> you know, we're always supposed to maintain good relations with the natives. <laughs> if he's going to die at a shootout, he might as well die happy. Billy Claiborne, you be careful. Mr. Chekhov, you be careful. <laughs> you be careful. <laughs> we haven't changed, not even our clothing yet. These people see and hear us as the Clantons. I don't think that's such a bad thing, Captain. Uh, it is. The Earps will kill the Clantons at the OK Corral. 
at 5 o'clock this afternoon. You take a close look at me. Yeah? Who do you think I am? Ike Clinton. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Captain James T. Kirk of the Spaceship Enterprise. We're not really here. We're from the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We haven't been born yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck getting anybody to believe that. Have you ever seen clothes like this before? Sure. Where? On the Clantons. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's great. I'm not joking. I'm not Ike Clanton. <laughs> Don't make no difference who I think you are. Your That's problem true. is who does why I don't think you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't yell at that that cute old man. <laughs> I'm afraid there's been some sort of misunderstanding. But we warned you not to show your ugly face in town again. Yes, of course you did, and I wanted to talk to you about We're that. We're done Just... talking, Clanton. My name is not Clanton, it's Kirk. We heard the talk about your jokes. I'm not joking. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Kirk. <laughs> 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 we got the lighting when over the, the eyes. Comes, Make a return. I'll pay him for this. Pay for what? You're the one who punched me. If you're in town at 5.01, We'll kill every one of you, whether you draw or not. And as usual, I'm wondering how in the world are they going to get out of this one? Straight bourbon. Try some in small amounts that was considered medicinal. Just takes a bit of getting used to, Captain. Actually, a man could grow quite fond of this stuff. <laughs> Scotty's glass is so full. <laughs> We're going to need fast reflexes from now on. There's no negotiating with the herbs. We know that. Mm-hmm. Where's Chekhov? Mr. Chekhov is involved, Captain. Shouldn't have come back to town, Billy. If he shoots at me, I will just step out of the way. Mr. Chekhov, I mean, Billy, come along. Where are we going, Captain? Yep. You know they're not going to let you leave. This is your punishment. Well, that settles that. The force field. <laughs> Three o'clock already. We have to find a way to put the herbs out of action. Is there anything that exists here and now that could help us out of this trap? All those Western Cossacks had were poisonous snakes and cactus plants. Bones. The venom. We're gonna poison them? Of course, Jim. I can make a tranquilizer. Oh, okay. I could make a device to deliver it on target. I know the place to get the proper drugs. I shall manufacture a familiarly known as a gas grenade. <laughs> Okay. Seems complicated to get done in two hours. Mind if I look around a bit? Crude, but very usable. I wouldn't touch that stuff if I was you. I have an urgent need for a small supply of this drug, too. It belongs to him. You'd better ask him. Is that... He must be an herb. You want it now? Lovely vest. Well, my name is still Holiday. Doc Holiday. The emergency is real. I need these things. Your emergency sure is real. Go on, take the stuff. Have some more fun. Only best you be finished before five o'clock. Because at one minute past five, you'll find a hole in your head right from this gun. So I wonder if these people are all like fabricated like they're like for lack of a better term like npcs because i don't they didn't exist before they were like they're here for the purpose of this specific time and place oh look at our little bo peep uh or if like the malkotians are like do they have their own sentience or are they just like mouthpieces for the malkotians because that guy sounded like he kind of knew like what their situation was more than the rest. Oh, I don't know. Well, aren't you going to ask me what I've got in my shopping bag? Have you been shopping? <laughs> of course, silly. With the dance only one week away. Or have you forgotten that already? No, no, I haven't forgotten. Yeah, the, the thing on my mind right now is surviving past 5 p.m. <laughs> Excuse it's me. Really Sorry. Wild when you see me in the new gown I'm going to make. Well on this most scrumptious material. Scrumptious. I was thinking what a beautiful wedding gown it would make. And him. Why don't we just turn that dance into a wedding ball? <gasps> Aww. I'm a 
afraid that wouldn't be possible. Aw, just play along. I am not someone you can marry. You are a cattle rustler and a horse thief. And I don't care what else. I warned you, Clayman, stay away. Oh, that guy loves punching people. You don't have to take anything from that scum don't now while I'm here. Her. Whack him with Is your bag. Get your hands off her. Don't come between Chekhov and his lady. I didn't expect something to happen before five o'clock. There's nothing I can do, Jim. I like this framing here. Let's do it now. Captain, let me. No. Captain, we can't just stand here and take it. Yes, we can. They're trying to push us into something we're not ready for. Mm-hmm. We still have time. Let it go, Jim. He's dead. Maybe he wouldn't be if I hadn't ignored the mail cut warning. Gentlemen, there is one thing which requires the immediate attention of all of us. Specifically, our future. Not this minute, Spock. It takes us a little longer. I understand the feeling, Captain. You talk about another man's feelings. What do you feel, Spock? Here we go. Mr. Spock, Chekhov is dead. Bones, Scotty. Captain, it's quite all right. They forget I am half human. That was a nice interaction. Mr. Chekhov is dead. William Claiborne survived. That means it doesn't have to happen the way it happened. We can change it. It would be worth a try. There is one other place I can try. Oh, that sheriff guy. Johnny. You looking for somebody? Yes, I was about to go inside your very real building. It's a little late to decide you don't have the belly for it. It's not too late. People in this town are counting on you to get rid of the herb for them. And the people better wake up and let the law work for them. You can talk that way after what Ooh. the herbs did to Billy today. But we don't want it to happen to us. Yes, I want revenge. I want to crush the life out of the herbs. It's the only I way! I can't just kill them! It's the only I can't way! Them. I can't oh my kill goodness. Them. There'll be no questions asked. Honest. He's saying play dirty if you have to. But you got to do it. I doubt that this combination of things was ever used for any purpose quite like this. Perhaps they would have been if they'd had your ingenuity, Doctor. Aw, that was a nice compliment. He's like, I don't, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> How long will it take the tranquilizer to have effect? Three or four seconds. How did you manage to test it? We have it. It has not been tested. Would a volunteer solve the problem? Would. On one condition, that I'm wide awake and with you. At five o'clock. Guaranteed. All right. All right. <laughs> Just to kill the pain. But this is painless. I should have warned me sooner, Mr. Spock. Fire away. <laughs> well, I think it's been longer than four seconds. It doesn't work. Nothing could go wrong, Captain. It should work. Then a radical alteration of our thought patterns must be in order. Look at the clock. Hey. Ten minutes. We're not going to move from this spot. So the Malkotians, like, oh, that was cool. Oh, did they just get transported there? They made sure that that didn't work. I mean, they have control over this whole thing. And they made sure that the, uh, the venom didn't work. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I don't think that's, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. You guys better ready to duel. Better stand and fight. Good. If they want to fight, let's give them a fight. Physical laws simply cannot be ignored. The tranquilizer you created should have been effective. Would have been effective anywhere else. Right. What killed Mr. Chekhov? His mind killed him. Well, come on, Spock. If you've got the answer, tell us. Where the laws do not operate, there is no reality. It's a, they're in a simulation. They're in a simulation. We judge reality by the response of our senses. Chekhov is dead because he believed the bullets would kill him. He may indeed be dead. We do not know. If we do not allow ourselves to believe that the bullets are real, they cannot kill us. I mean, true. I was like looking for like a, a bullet hole 
or blood on Chekhov and there wasn't the any. The smallest doubt would be enough to kill you. We don't have that clockwork ticker in our head like you do. We can't just turn it on and off. You must. A Vulcan mind melt. On all of them? Very well, sir. One at a time or all at once? They have 10, less than 10 minutes by this point. It's time. Town Marshal. Your mind to my mind. <laughs> Scotty looks rather frightened. They look like undertakers, like they're gonna kill us and then they're gonna we're, they're gonna do our funeral. They will not pass through your body, for they do not exist. They do not exist. Oh, Doc, the doctor. Nothing but ghosts. They are lies, specters without body. Specter of the gun. So the doctor was one of the Earps. Oh yeah, he's got the badge. I didn't see it before. It worked. Oh, they still got more bullets. <laughs> Now you're fighting Kirk style. I guess this is all a test to see if they are violent. If if humans, uh, the Federation is a violent uh, group or not. Hey, we're back. What happened? Where have I been? Right here, it seems. But that girl, she was so beautiful. Do you remember anything else? No. Good. Perhaps that explains why he's here. Nothing was real to him. Except the girl. Did we That's pass reading. your test? Energy output increasing beyond measurable levels, Captain. It's gone, sir. Well, yeah, self-destructed. No damage, sir. All decks report fully operational. You did not kill. Is this the way of your kind? It is. We prefer the ways of peaceful contact. Like we said, we have sought you out to join us. Our mission is still one of peace. Approach our planet and be welcome. Our warning threats are over. Yeah! Oh, but we're... It's gonna... The episode's gonna end right there, isn't it? <sighs> Captain, this afternoon, you wanted to kill, didn't you? Is that the way it seemed to you, Mr. Spock? Yes, Captain. Mr. Spock... You're absolutely right. That's exactly the way it was. <laughs> That's the way it was in 1881. I wonder how humanity managed to survive. We overcame our instinct for violence. I like that. You know, back in the late 60s and early 70s, whenever season three was being written and filmed, uh, you know, people back then were hoping that the human race would overcome their instinct to kill. And while I can't even say if we've made any progress on that, unfortunately, it seems like it's it hasn't uh, fully happened yet, but... There is still hope, maybe. <laughs> I think that's one of the... I'm feeling a little emotional. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I mean, I know why, but... Anyways, I, I feel like that's one of um, my favorite things about Star Trek is that, like, hopefulness, that, that light, where instead of fighting amongst ourselves, we're expanding out in the galaxy, and, and we want to explore and learn and connect with other intelligent life and build things and do good things. I think that's why so many people are drawn to Star Trek because our, our reality will probably never get there, at least not in our lifetimes. Things lately, you know, these past few years have been getting worse rather than better, at least from my limited experience 
And I see people now where we're all the same, you know, we're all humans. We all come from the same planet in this gigantic universe. There is nothing out there that we would find that is like, you know, our fellow people, our neighbors, our family members, and yet I see so many families broken up, so many friendships broken up, so much hate, so much violence. I see it in my comments. People are calling each other names in the comments on a Star Trek video. That is so anti-Star Trek. That Did you guys even watch Star Trek? I know that's not everybody. That's a very small minority, but I hate it when I see it. And circling back to what I was originally going to say, I think this is why people are so drawn to Star Trek, because it speaks of a better world. We can, for a short amount of time, escape all this hate and negativity. We can be with our friends who would never judge us, who would never want to hurt us. Just please try to be nice to one another. Okay, um, I... I have kind of confused feelings about this episode right this minute. Uh, I need to think about it a little more and maybe watch it again to really, because I, I want to say, like, I really, really, really liked it. I loved the setting. Um, the whole Western thing, for some reason, like, really pulled me in. And I wanted, I feel like they just teased me with something that could have been so much more and I know they had their restrictions with time and money and things like that and season three was just hectic and very different than season one and season two but I would love if they would expand on this episode on these the setting and these characters I really liked the doctor character I don't know why I wanted to see more of him I liked the actor I like how he seemed to like kind of know, be in the know about what was going on. Like he was one of the Malkotians, you know, just like, oh yeah, here you go, take it. <laughs> Even though I know it's not going to work because we're not going to let it work. Go for it. <laughs> take everything. <laughs> it doesn't matter because we just built this, you know, just for this purpose. Uh, they didn't even build it. It's, it's all like a, a mind thing, right? I love the stuff with Chekhov and the girl. That was really entertaining. She was great. Chekhov was great. Uh, the sheriff was great. I just, I don't know. I feel like this episode was a really strong one. The premise and the whole idea kind of reminded me a lot of the Corbomite maneuver and Balok. And he was testing the Enterprise. And these guys were also testing them to see how they would react and what they would do. But this one felt so, so different, so unique that I just, I really liked it. It worked out really well for me. We had some great uh, moments with um, the four of them, like after Chekhov had got shot, about the three were mourning Chekhov and they wanted some time to kind of reflect on what had happened to their fellow crewmate. And Spock was like, you know, let's kind of work out what we're going to do next, what our next um, step is. And they took that as he didn't care about Chekhov because, you know, it's Vulcan and stuff. But I think he just, you know, deals with it in a different way than the rest of them. And I don't remember his exact words, but Spock said something about like he does understand their feelings and... I think that was kind of his way of saying, like, I feel, I feel it too. So a really fun episode, some great guest actors, a really nice, hopeful, happy message at the end, and a good reminder about why Star Trek draws us in the way it does. How do you guys feel about this episode? Did you like it as much as I have? And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.